Hi there, everybody, and welcome back to another stock analysis video. Today, we got our very special video where we're going to be analyzing our first nuclear energy company, BWXT, which stands for BWX Technologies. Now, this one was recommended by actually one of my friends. I know him personally, and he pretty much just said, Hey, please make a video on nuclear power companies with good fundamentals and dividends if possible. Nuclear is the only way out of the whole the, the world is in with energy demands. And privately, he also commented, hey, do BWXT. So let's analyze this company and see if maybe we would like to invest in it based on their fundamentals. So with that said, let's get started with this analysis. We are going to jump right into the dividends, guys, because, well, this company does pay out a dividend, which caught me by surprise. Current yield of 1.61%, which ends up being 22 cents per share for an annual payout of 88 cents. And the payout ratio in regards to the net income is around 29.5%, with a five-year CAGR of 17 and three quarters of a percent. That's actually really, really good. And on top of that, guys, they have grown this dividend for nine consecutive years as well. So as it stands from these numbers, this looks fairly good. However, when it comes to the payout ratio, let's take a look at this in regards to the cash flow. Now, if you would like to have gotten this dividend, unfortunately, the ex-dividend date passed as of May 19th. The payout was just last month of June 8th, and they pay their dividends quarterly. Now coming over here to the calculator, we got that ticker symbol of BWXT market cap of $5 billion, PE of 17.45. That's actually fairly, fairly interesting because with the current share price of around $55 or so, according to this earnings, this is pretty much saying that this might actually be a pretty decent price to buy it at. However, we have no idea what the cash flow is. We don't know what the net income is. We don't even know what the revenues are or the shares outstanding or anything like that. So we're going to take a look at that and then make assumptions into the future as to where we think this company might go. Now, looking at these dividends, 88 cents per share annually, looking further into this, this actually ends up being around $80.26 million being paid out in dividends every single year. Now, in regards to their shares outstanding, unfortunately, this is actually a little bit more than their five-year average free cash flow. Looking at the five-year average free cash flow and taking the amounts of dividends paid every single year, they essentially pay out more dividends than they have made in the last year, in the last five-year average free cash flow of around negative $20.5 million. And even looking Looking at the previous year's current cash flow, they're still in the red by around $5 million. These payout ratios come out to be 107.15% for the last year's free cash flow and 134.34% for the five year average free cash flow. So essentially, guys, they cannot cover this dividend at all. Now let's take a look at some fundamentals, starting of course with the net income. Let's see if they actually made money five years ago of $147.8 million to one year ago $305.9 million. That's an increase of 107%. And what do I always say when I look at these numbers? You want to see if the on the five year it is increasing and if also it is consistently increasing as well. So you can see right here, from five to four, really nice increase from four to three, another increase from three to two, another increase, and then from two to one, another very good increase. I love seeing these staircase increases when it comes to the net income. By far, this is a check mark right here. Looking now at the free cash flow, the lifeblood of the company, and the most important profit metric that we have because cash flow is what companies use to essentially pay out everything, right? They use it to buy back shares, to pay down debt, to issue a dividend, to make acquisitions, and to just grow the company as a whole. So we need this number guys to be positive and unfortunately when it comes to BWXT it is not and it is also decreasing as well five years ago of 125.1 million dollars to one year ago of 74.9 million dollars is a decrease of 40 percent on the five year with a five-year average of around 59.74 million dollars now this may look very very bad especially two years ago where they did a negative 58.6 million dollars However, guys, I need to make some defense here when it comes to this company because at least on the two year ago mark, we need to attribute this to COVID, right? I mean, it kind of is difficult to do because we didn't see that two years ago problem in the net income. And if we actually come down here, sneak peek on the revenue, we don't see that either. So it's 
kind of iffy as to why this is this way on the cast flow. But in regards to why this is actually going down, understand that free cash flow is cash from operations less your capital expenditures. So if we take a look at the cash from operations and the capital expenditures here on Seeking Alpha, we can see that five years ago they were at $222 million, then it was $169.3 million, then it went back up to $279.4 million, then two years ago in 2020 they went down to $196.4 million, and then last year they went back up to $386 million dollars and currently guys if you take a look at the ttm to today they are currently at 282.2 million dollars so the cash from operations is increasing except for two years here where they did 169 and 196 the 2020 number guys i could only attribute that to covid maybe if you guys know why this may have been the case then uh tell me in the comment section below the 2018 number though is the one that I really just don't know. If you guys know why this happened then, then you know, tell me in the comment section below. But overall, the cash from operations is increasing guys. The capital expenditures, which is essentially what companies use to grow the company, right? Is, is investing back into the company. This is also increasing, going from essentially 97 million to 109.3 million, to 182, to 255, to 311, and then currently today of 261. So. It is increasing, but the fact that it is increasing, this is not necessarily a bad thing because if they use this capital expenditures the correct way, they could reinvest back into the company and grow into the future, which we're actually seeing that when it comes to, of course, the net income and even that of the revenue. So that's just one way to look at this negative cash flow and even decreasing cash flow. But nonetheless, as it stands, this is still a negative metric for all intents and purposes. Now let's take a look at the last profit metric, which we touched upon a little bit here and there. The revenue five years ago of $1.7 billion to one year ago of $2.1 billion. Guys, that's an increase of 25.86%. And this is kind of looking very, very similar to the net income. A really nice increase throughout the past five years. Now let's take a look at some balance sheet numbers. The total assets minus, of course, the total liabilities. Will this company survive if we were to go on a tailspin in a recession, right? Do they have enough assets to cover their debt? Now, according to this, guys, they do. Currently at 659.9, essentially $660 million. And to their credit as well, within the past five years, they have been positive and also increasing it as well. Average total assets around $2.1 billion, average liabilities around $1.6 billion, and doing this difference, we get around $473 million. And now let's take a look at whether or not they have been able to cover their liabilities with their cash flow on the past five years. Now, obviously, we see here a negative downtrend when it comes to this metric. What I like to look for is if this getting closer and closer to zero as the years go on. So you can see, unfortunately, it is not. It is actually getting more in the negatives to the current cash minus liabilities of around $1.8 billion. Average total cash flow minus the average liabilities is around $1.5 billion. And now let's take a look at the metric that companies tend to fail, especially companies like these guys. Companies that are rather new, that aren't mega caps, they usually tend to issue shares, right? However, this is actually, again, fairly surprising. They're buying back shares, guys, at a pretty good rate, too. Five years ago of 99.4 million shares to today of 91.2 million shares. On the five years, this is a pretty good decrease of eight and a quarter percent. And from the previous year to the current year, this is looking at one year ago of 91.4 million shares to today of 91.2 million shares as an increase of almost a quarter of a percent. Guys, this is actually looking really, really good because the more shares that they buy back, the more uh, ownership of the company that you have if you own the company already. And on top of that, guys, the more shares that they buy back, the more, sh the less shares that there are out there in the market, meaning the less of a dividend they also have to pay out. So right then and there, the more shares that, that they buy back, they could actually make that payout ratio in regards to the free cash flow with their dividends significantly better if they continue to buy back shares. And lastly, looking at how much cash they have on hand, they're currently at around $23.6 million with an average cash of around 69.98, essentially $70 million. All right, now it's time to make some assumptions. Low, medium, high using three different factors, revenue growth, projected share buyback, and of course, the required rate of return. 
guys, for the required rate of return, I like to keep it flat at 10%. You guys can change this to whatever number you like. I just personally like 10% to match the S&P 500 on average over the last several decades, right? Now for the revenue growth, we're going to be doing this together. Coming over here to Seeking Alpha's growth tab, we can see that the revenue growth year over year is 0.8% and the revenue growth forward is 2.5%. So it's fairly close to each other for me to be comfortable with my assumptions. So let's take a look into the low assumption now. I'm going to say guys that this company will be making around 1% of revenue growth within the next four years. For the media assumption, I'm going to say around 2%. And for the highest assumption, let's say around 3%. Obviously, these are just my assumptions. You guys can change this to whatever number you like. Now for the projected share buyback, we did see that within the past five years, they have bought back at around eight and a quarter percent. Do I believe that this will continue to happen? Probably not. So for the lowest assumption, let's say around 2%. For the media assumption, let's say around 4%. And for the highest assumption, let's say around 6%. Now that we have all of these numbers inputted, guys, we see that the target share price for the low assumption, it is now $11.75. For the media assumption, it is $12.42. And for the high assumption, it is $13.13. .13. Now, unfortunately, this company's target share price after debt doesn't work when it comes to discounted free cash flow. And the reason is because well, they have a lot more debt than they do have cash and equivalents. That's essentially why we're getting negative numbers over here. But, but, but just because we have these numbers over here doesn't mean that we can't use other metrics as well to justify the target share prices not adjusting for debt. So let's come over here to the book ratio calculator, the book value and tangible book value ratio calculators to see what we can actually find when it comes to the book value, right? So let's come over here. And if we scroll down, we can see that their book value per share is actually currently at $7.24, up from the five years ago of $2.87 of 152%. And now looking at the tangible book value, well, this one is currently at $2.07, up from the five year of negative 44 cents. They really had a bad year, guys, four years ago, but they did recover afterwards. Now, this is an increase of 570 percent when it comes to their tangible book value and looking at these ratios for the price to the current book value and the price to the current tangible book value we get the ratio of 7.63 for the book value and we get 26.7 for the tangible book value essentially saying that this is pretty much overpriced right you want this number to be as close to 1.00 as possible 7 and 26 very very high guys essentially overvalued and the fact that we are getting a current book value of $7.24 and a tangible book value per share, of course, of $2.07. And on top of that, we have the discounted free castle giving around $11.75 to $13.13. It's .13. pretty much just telling me that with the current share price of $55.27, it is overvalued unfortunately it really really is however this is based guys off of my assumptions every investment is the present value of all future cash flow and none of this was financial advice all these graphs that you saw over here were just public information that anybody could have and these right here are just my assumptions i have this calculator available for free anybody can have it just go into my calculators playlist you can download it over there there's a link in the description make a copy and you make your own assumptions when it comes to these stocks because at the end of the day guys every every investment is the present value of all future capital so make your own assumptions and see where your numbers lie i'll give you an example real quick let's just say that you think that this company because it's a uh, part of like the nuclear energy sector let's say that you believe that it'll grow at 10 percent and that they'll buy back shares at around i don't know uh let's just keep it the same at around six percent with the same required rate of return look at this guys look at this now the target share price not just for that is 16 dollars and 68 cents Target share price after debt is in the positive as well as the margins of safety as well. It really just depends as to where you think this company will go in the future. I personally think 3% is fine for me. But if you guys disagree, again, make your own assumptions. All I'm asking for in return, guys, for these three free calculators, as well as a dividend tracking sheet, is just help me grow my channel. Thank you so much. We're so close to 700 subscribers. Can we please get to 700 by the end of the week? That would be awesome. Now let's take a look at this company in regards to its dividend because, well, they do pay a dividend. So let's figure out if we were to invest one month's income at the current average U.S. income of $68,703, how much in dividends would you actually get paid from this company? Well, doing so, this would buy you 103.59 shares, 
and at the current annual dividends per share, this would buy you $91.16 for the annual dividends, quarterly dividends of $22.79, and for the monthly dividend of $7.60. Now, as it stands, this isn't that good, right? I mean, we have done other companies, and even another company that he himself, uh, my friend, recommended, ET, you are getting $200 in annual dividends for the same monthly investment. As it stands, this is under $100, and the fact that the current share price is 55 and these calculators, both the book value as well as discounted free cash flow is telling me around $10, $12 is still pretty much overpriced. You would be better off just waiting till this company falls at around that range. All in all, guys, this is actually fairly interesting of a company. I got to say, for what it's worth, it's looking fairly good. The two issues that I have with this company, technically three, but the two issues I really have with this company is that they cannot afford this dividend on the last year's cash flow and even the five-year average cash flow. In my personal opinion, they should either cut it or completely suspend it at least for a certain amount of time, get their stuff together and make sure that they are able to actually cover this dividend in the future. Another area of content is the fact that the free cash flow is going down. However, it's kind of iffy because their cap X is going up. Can't really blame them for that. They're probably reinvesting back into themselves. And the last area that I'm really, really scared for is this cash flow minus the liabilities, right? This probably has to do with the fact that their cash flow has been decreasing. So again, all comes back to they should probably just focus on growing this free cash flow into the future. But aside from that, guys, this is looking not that bad, honestly. Like, it really isn't. I wouldn't invest in this for a dividend play. And if you do invest in this, I would say keep an eye on that free cash flow. If it changes, if you see it go down even more and there is no explanation as to why, then, you know, that's a big red flag. But positive net income, positive revenue, buying back shares, it's looking fairly good, guys. I personally like this company. That pretty much does it for this video. Like the video, like, comment, subscribe. As I said, you guys can follow me on my new tech sites. Link in the description below. So with that said, peace out and be on the lookout for the next stock analysis of video. And if anybody has any recommendations, please leave it down in the comment section below.